All right, so today I'm doing a video on the mesh modeling tools and how they've been upgraded and improved with the upcoming Unreal 426 release. And uh, this is just what Preview 1 looks like. I don't know if it's subject to change. We'll see. But either way, I wanted to go over it. Uh, let's jump right in. All right, let's go. Okay, so first things first, uh, we're going to need to go and enable the plugin. Already enabled it, but let's just go here. It's going to be under, if you just look up model, I've already enabled the plugin, but if you just look up model, uh, you will find modeling tools editor mode, and that's what you're going to need to enable and restart the editor. All right, so now once you got the editor restarted, uh, you can now come to your modes panel, enable, hit modeling, and now they've added this. If you've seen the old version, uh, it would just start you off of the box. Here you get thrown into the primitives mode, and you can add anything you want. Right? Like before. This somewhat works the same here once you've added these, but you can now just easily come here, add a add one of these preset primitives. Okay. Uh they're all different models, I believe. Let's see. No, I think they're good. Looks like they've... Okay. All right, and now that these have been made, we can just come over here. Uh, okay, we're going to start off by going to the Create tab. Uh, everything that's new doesn't have any icon under it. Uh, and it's just the ones with text. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, some of the new ones are these Draw to Resolve tool. The Poly Re Revolve Okay, so what this tool is, is we can actually draw uh, the shape of the mesh that we want to make. And it will actually create this little thing. I've already changed the tools, but it would create a 360. And it looks like I inverted the things. Um, so like, say we want to build some cylinder or something like that, instead of having to rely on uh building these primitives into it we can actually just build this or we just have our little outline and it's weird obviously because it's trying to build it at zero i have to do this weird thing okay um and you can actually you know depending on what you're making you can get some pretty great meshes out of here just by using this now i'm gonna try cut resolve Okay, uh, now that now that we're done with the kind of build types, I'm not I'm not sure how to get this to work. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Uh, what I want to do is so now they've now added a couple new vo uh, voxel tools. But first, what I want to check out is this new section here. If you can tell, that says mesh boolean and then self union. So this is kind of cool in. So now we have built in actual mesh tools instead of relying on the voxel Boolean tools, which could be a little dirty because it is voxelized. Uh, so the resolution on that is dependent on how you, how well of a cut you can get. Uh, and the nice thing, I'm actually doing a bad job showing this off because say we have a uh, cylinder, or, yeah, we'll do a cylinder, okay, and then let's assign a different material, let's go back to create mesh, and as you can tell, it inherits the materials as well, so this is something that, to me, it, I find it could be very useful, um, and it's super fast, all right, and now onto some of the new tool, the new voxel tools. So here is voxel wrap, and basically this is if you've used Blender or 3ds Max, if it's kind of like a, um, like what is it, uh, a shell tool. So like here's a normal box, right? You wouldn't be able to see anything here because so it creates that internal structure. And now onto vox blend. Anything that's grayed out, generally, at least in this here, it means that you need to have more than one selected. Uh, so now that we have more than one selected, we have this voxel blend tool. Um, so this 
does a little differently than doing the voxel merge tool, where the voxel merge tool tries to just combine them. Uh, here, it, I, I think it's just how it gets blended is differently, because it definitely looks different. You can see the this here. Um, but we have more control over how large the blend is. It tries not to get rid of this blended area um, as well. And we can change the fall off. We've got a lot of control here. Sorry, I'm doing a really bad job at uh, explaining it. But if we if we look at it compared to the voxel merge, which just tries to actually merge them to be one tool, I think that kind of shows it off a little better. Now we are going to move on to the uh, transform tab. Uh, and for the most part, this seems like it stayed the same. You can still set transforms. Uh, I haven't clicked into each one of these, so there might have been differences there, like on edit pivot or baking. Uh, the combined tool has been in there. Let's see. Um, so from there, uh, and in fact, I know nothing's different because they've added, you know, everything has text like this. And now let's look at the deform tools. All right, so here is the mirror tool. Uh, that This has been added. Uh, I'm not going to go over the stuff that ha is not new, if it's not obvious. Uh, there's just way too much stuff. You can look at my old video if you need that. Uh, so it's it's pretty nice. It uh, it does exactly what you expect. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk it? It does exactly what you expect. Oh, this is kind of cool, too. I didn't see this when I was looking at this. So it actually has a save mode. So that you can actually create a new asset that's mirrored instead of just having you update that old asset. That is very nice to have. And then you can also do things like this. So you mirror existing uh, versus mirror and append to it. Um, and there's some different snap options. But overall, mirroring's pretty... Mirroring's mirroring everywhere. So hopefully you understand that. All right, now we've got the offset tool. Uh, this is just, yeah. Oh, we can create a shell from here as well. Okay, there you go. All right, that shows you what a shell is again, as well. You can do other stuff in there as well, but let's see. So they've also added paint maps straight to here. So this is where it's going to be a little interesting. So I don't know if they're going to get rid of, like, the actual mesh paint mode. Uh, like, obviously, at the moment, they can't because it's, like, it's not, there's no color setting. There's no... There's not really all the settings that you would expect out of this. But to me, this is an interesting sign if it's just going to be placed into here. Um, I mean, it makes sense to me. Um, but who knows what is fully planned. I personally don't. Because it, it's nice either way. And it actually, to me, this would be nice because what happens in the current version, so 425, is that if you do edit the attributes or anything like that on something, uh, it will actually lose the vertex data. Um, on the mesh so maybe this is their way of like implementing it into this so that that type of thing won't happen i'm not gonna guess though um one thing to say our next spot. okay uh and now we are gonna go into polygroups uh this is where it gets a little fun so they've added some new tools to uh they've added some new tools to actually like insert loops. So this, uh, to me, makes this tool actually a lot better than it was before. So before they just had these poly edit and poly deform tools. Um, so actually like modeling in here was pretty rough um, unless you use the sculpting tools or things like that. And it's actually pretty, so they have the so wireframe mode on. You can see in real time what your wireframe's gonna look like uh, once it's triangulated. Uh, and as long as your mesh is clean, you're gonna get these loop tools and then uh, you can actually change how it figures some stuff out as well, you know, and I think this makes it a lot more viable. Uh, not that I would recommend it, like, to me, uh, using an actual dedicated modeling tool will probably always be faster, but um, for those little tweaks or say you're experimenting, this is, I think now it's a lot more, you know, it's not unreasonable to say, oh, you should try this. So you can also do edge insert, by the way. I didn't go over that just right away because it's the same as loop insert, except you're obviously just putting in one edge. 
Um, there's a couple flaws with it, but, so not really a flaw, but so it's not like you're putting in uh, a vertex or something like that. So say I wanted to split the difference here. Uh, that's something I can't do. Not that I necessarily would recommend doing that if you're trying to, you know, but depending on what you're trying to model, you might want to, you know, start a box here. Like, so you can't do that type of thing um, just yet. But it's one of those things where maybe you don't need to have that as a thing. Sorry. This is one of those ones where it's like, it's kind of like, I don't see anyone actually modeling in here. But if you do, um, or at least if you do have to do some things, it's now a lot easier. Like, there's no reason to export it out just to clean up some stuff at the moment. All right, now on to triangles. Uh, obviously, I don't have a hole in this mesh, so I can't use hole fill, but the name self-explanatory. All right, now mount to mesh is a new remap tool. Um, oh God, I totally broke it. Okay, and now for the fun stuff. Uh, here is UV normals, is what section we're under now. Uh, so the stuff that they've added, is you can now see the tangent, uh, your normal tangents, uh, and actually change the mode of how it is uh, calculating those. Nothing too crazy, but at least if you need to recalculate your tangents inside here, you can actually kind of have a little bit of control. By default, these are like super tiny where you can't even see anything, so it's a little weird. And then you can basically compare them to what the engine wants to make them. Uh, so nothing too crazy for that tangent, but that's a nice added addition. So you and bring you bring it in with your own custom tangents, and then you can compare it to what the engine uh, wants and kind of fix some stuff. All right, so this feature is what I really like. So if you're doing any, like, to me, if you're blocking stuff out with the built-in tools, uh, the one issue before was that you're kind of stuck to just using auto unwrap uh, because everything else was kind of just broken. Um, but now, uh, not that this is going to fix it, but uh, you can now use, uh, you can now edit the actual seams uh, that it auto generates. Uh, so this is kind of nice. You are using the built in uh, like subdivisions on the mesh, and there's weird things like that. Uh, and then the other flaw that I saw, and maybe it, um, maybe it's just that it's not done yet, but currently it seems you cannot actually, uh, remove what you've created or remove one of the things it created. Like say I wanted this to be the, uh, you know, I don't want this to be a seam on my mesh, which realistically I probably wouldn't have be a seam. Uh, there's no current way to actually remove the seam. Uh, it's kind of silly. Not sure why, um, but yeah. All right, and now uh, on to the last added tool for UV and normals, and that is bake map. So you can now actually bake out your uh, different maps, and there are a lot available from norm. Okay, just in case you guys can't read, I'll probably zoom in on here. Uh, but you can basically bake out the normal map, the AO, and the curvature of the mesh, as well as um, not sure what the difference is here. Uh, normal image, face normal image, um, and then texture 2D image. Like to me that, so is this color? Is this, I'm not sure. You know, like it's it just worded a little weird there. Um, and the nice thing is you can actually then place it onto a specific UV layer uh, if you had more than one. Okay, uh, and lastly, this is the cool new tab. I love this tab. It looks pretty cool. Um, the What it can do is really nice. Um, all right, so this... Here is under the volumes tab, uh, we can actually start, uh, it's basically, they name it volumes, but really it's more about conversion. Uh, so the first thing here uh, that is listed is mesh to volume. So you can now take your mesh that you've made and turn it into a volume for the engine. So that means any kind of volume. If you want this to be a blocking volume, an audio volume, any type of volume. All right, so I'm going to just make this a, uh, keep it on default, it's now a blocking volume. We can also uh, update an existing volume to use this if we want to. So instead of making a new thing to place, this would just take our, for instance, I selected post-process volume. This would take our post-process volume and overwrite it with this volume. Uh, there's obviously, there's some tool output options of whether or not you wanna delete the sources. So delete that source volume. 
or hide them or keep them. Um, but basically, and then you can also tell it to triangulate it or minimize, minimize the amount of polygons on there. Um, but we can literally just hit accept. All right, so I had a little crash there, so I'm gonna create a new bot. Uh, and that's what's expected with things like this, where this is a new tool. Um, going to accept that. If you can tell, there's now a new volume here. I can't actually, there might not be, I don't know. Uh, can't actually see it. I think it's getting deleted. So the mesh to volume might not work. Let's see this though. So there's also, if you notice, there is a volume to mesh. So what we could do is say we added a blocking volume and we had, you know, I'm not gonna edit this, so we're just gonna do this. Um, so say we have this blocking volume, we can actually come over here and just say volume to mesh and it is now mesh. I'm not sure quite why you would wanna do something like this. I guess for collision things maybe, um, but it's an option now. Um, but along with that, there's now BSP conversion. So uh, you can take, so you can now take something like, say you made some stairs at a BSP. Uh, you can now take that and actually use the conversion tool. And you now um, and just instead of worrying about, oh, no, I didn't, you know, my, my, my game's full of BSP, so it's performing terribly. Because BSP is gross, you can now <laughs> you can now just take your BSP and convert it into a mesh in one button. That's how fast it is. You literally just bam, except this is now a mesh. It's a it's a gross looking mesh because it's shaded weirdly, but it's now a mesh. Uh, you can now also inspect the physics volume of meshes by selecting them. And hitting this, but there's also now a mesh to collision. So you could make a mesh and then make it into collision. Um, I haven't actually, this has been buggy for me, so I don't know the actual, all the buttons, but basically you get the gist of it. Like you get, hopefully, um, is it's just some conversion tools. So you can also now do a convert a collision geometry to a mesh. Um, I think the most important tools out of this though are honestly the mesh to volume tools. Anyways, hopefully you get what I'm saying is there's now all these cool new conversion tools. That will be really nice once it happens. You'll be able to just have any mesh become a volume so you can make a mesh that acts as your blocking volume um, using the sculpt tools, whatever inside here, and then just convert it to your uh, blocking volume, or e even further, you can do the opposite. You can, now granted, you can edit blocking volumes and things like that, but this seems like it will speed that process up for some people, especially since the tools in here are a lot better and faster than, like, the BSP tool. And then if you do use BSP, uh, you can now convert that to a static mesh, and then from there have access to all the other conversion tools. So... Anyways, uh, that is what I wanted to cover for the most part, um, is we've got some nice cool, nice tools coming. The, so you no longer have to export necessarily for things um, where you would have to before, and that is pretty useful. Um, if you like this video and want to learn more about Unreal, uh, and just kind of explore. Obviously, this is not a tutorial. This was not anything like that. I just wanted to explore this tool with you guys. Uh, so if you want more videos like this, uh, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, all that, th all that stuff. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thanks for stopping in.